up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be going through the compositing process and all the different passes used in our recently uploaded tank attack video. The 3D aspect of this animation was created inside of Blender and then we exported various passes for use inside of After Effects for our compositing. And I'll just be going through all the different passes and elements we used to create the scene. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects. I'll go ahead and play through the final animation here really quick. And that is our final animation with all of our passes combined. Let's go ahead and go through it layer by layer. All right, so the first thing that we added was our environment and tank beauty pass here. And the beauty pass is just kind of the base layer before you add any ambient occlusion or mist or other elements to your scene to kind of blend everything together. And as you can see, it looks a little bit uncanny compared to the final composite, but that is the whole point of compositing is to bring everything together. And uh, as you can see here, it's just a very basic render, no atmosphere or smoke or any compositing elements added. We've also rendered out in the beauty pass our uh, rigid body simulation of the uh, wall in front of the tank being blown up here, as well as our metal barrels that were crushed here as well. So just kind of an overall pass of the entire scene, nothing really special, but just kind of creating that base to composite on top of. All right, so the next layer we exported from Blender to composite in our scene here was our ambient occlusion pass. And ambient occlusion is going to help you create shadows when surfaces are close to each other, kind of uh, based on the ambient lighting in the scene. So as you can see here, when we turn on the ambient occlusion pass on top of our beauty pass, you can see that certain aspects of our scene get uh, darker based on the calculation of the ambient lighting. And as you can see, if we isolate the ambient occlusion pass by itself, this is what it looks like. It's just rendering out the shadows based on that ambient lighting. And I've changed the uh, layer mode to multiply so that only the shadows are overlaid on top of our original beauty pass. If you want to control the amount of shadows that your ambient occlusion pass gives, all you would do is you would just go to the opacity settings under the ambient occlusion pass. And then essentially you could change how much shadow you add based on the opacity setting in your layer that has your ambient occlusion. All right, so the next layer that we added was our mist pass that we exported from Blender. As I've talked about previously in other videos, the mist pass is essentially that atmospheric fall off that you'll see in the real world emulated inside the computer. So as you can see here, when we turn on the mist pass, it's going to add some mist that gets more dense the further into Z space you go. So it's just a way to add that atmospheric fall off so that distant elements in your scene have a lot more mist added to them while closer up elements have a lot less atmosphere added to them. So as you can see here, if we uh, isolate this layer by itself, you can see what the mist pass is doing. It's just creating an overlay of dense mist for those distant elements and then up close, not very much mist at all, just to create a little bit more depth in your shot. And again, to control this, all you would do is change the opacity of this pass depending on how dense you want that mist to be. And uh, as you can see here, if we enable the other two layers here, we can actually control the amount of mist that's in our scene and create a little bit of depth and composite a little bit more realistic of a shot. Another thing that we did, including our mist pass, to create a little bit more realism in our atmosphere is we added a few clouds elements and atmospheres to pass by the camera as the animation moves around the city here. So I've added four different clouds elements here and I'll go ahead and turn them on really quick. And as you can see, it's going to add some variation in the mist itself to create a little bit more realism. I'll go ahead and also turn the color grade on as well, just so we can get an idea of what that's doing. It's just adding a little bit of uh, variation in our atmosphere itself. And they're also uh, video files, so the smoke is kind of moving around. And as you can see in the beginning part of the animation, we, you can see the clouds here creating some variation as well, kind of lifting the shadows a little bit. And as you can see here, when we play through our animation, as our camera moves over the city, the clouds kind of move off to the left and create a little bit of movement and life in our scene. And I think this technique is especially useful in addition to the mist pass to create some variation within the mist itself. I think without it, a lot of the time the mist is too uniform. So this is a really good technique you can use to add some variation to your scene with a live action element and uh, composite everything a little bit more effectively. So just a few stock elements of mist that we uh, kind of animated off to the left having them go past camera and create a little bit of life. 
Alright, so for our explosion, we exported four different elements from Blender. As you can see here, our first pass is our explosion beauty pass. And we'll go ahead and turn that on here. And this is just our very base explosion layer that we created utilizing some chaos add-on operators inside of Mantaflow. I think we used maybe three or four different uh, 360 ground burst operators here. One to create the dust wave and several to create the upward blast as well and some variation within the blast. And as you can see here, when we play through it with just the beauty pass of the explosion, it doesn't really look that realistic because we haven't added that glowing glare and composited it all together. So that is the importance of our next layer, the explosion emission pass. As I've talked about before, the emission pass is the part of the explosion that is emitting light. So just the flames mostly. And as you can see here, when we turn the emission pass on, in addition to all of the glow effects that we've added to it, it's going to create that glow and that fiery look to the simulation. For both the explosion beauty pass and the emission pass, we've uh, added a few effects to them to change the look of them. I'll just go through the beauty pass by itself here really quick and the effects that we added to it. So I'll turn off the emission pass for now. And for the explosion beauty pass, we've added two different color correction effects to it. One being the curves effect. And we just use the curves to reduce the contrast of it a little bit. As you can see here, when we turn it off, it becomes a little bit too dark for the scene. So we just added that curve setting to uh, bring up the brightness and reduce the contrast of that simulation render. And then we've just added a tint to the explosion beauty pass as well, mapping the black and the white to the color of the road in the scene here to kind of blend it into the environment a little bit better and then we've uh, reduced the amount of tint to 16% so it's just barely tinting our explosion to the rest of our city and our road that it's composited on top of uh, so just a little technique that you can use to kind of blend in other passes that you're overlaying on top of an environment all right so we've added four different effects to our emission pass as you can see if we isolate the emission pass by itself this is what it looks like and this is what we're going to be adding all of those glow effects to to composite the fire in our scene more effectively and as you can see here the first effect that we added was the hue and saturation effect to remap some of the color values so when we turn that on you can see that the color remaps a little bit and what we've done here is we've increased the red saturation and brought down the red lightness in the red channel and then under the yellow channel we've uh, decreased the yellow saturation and then brought down barely brought down the yellow lightness in order to uh, kind of change the variation of colors in that fire explosion and hue and saturation is a great technique to use if you want to change the original colors of your simulation if it's not quite what you wanted you can push the flame elements in different directions depending on which colors that you want and adjust all of the different color channels that you have in a very controllable way so we've added that hue and saturation the next three effects that we added to this emission layer were some glow effects as you can see here just some uh, basic glow that we've added and what we've done here on each of these glow effects is we've adjusted the glow threshold and the glow radius to get a little bit different style of glow for each effect and then we've also changed the colors of the glow to an orange color as well and the reason I've added different glow effects here is to isolate different parts of the explosion and add glow on that part specifically so we use the threshold value to control which part of the emission pass is selected so play around with your different glow effects I usually add around three different glow effects to the emission pass to tweak it and get exactly what I want um, but feel free to play around with with one or two as well as the human saturation node to kind of adjust the colors of your emission pass of the flames of your simulation all right so the next two passes that we added to our scene here were some debris fields created inside of blender utilizing the chaos add-on as you can see here we have a rock pass and a glass pass and we've done some basic masking to kind of isolate their elements in the scene a little bit better so they don't overlap with the tank and as you can see here when we play through our simulation those debris fields on top of our original rigid body simulation just kind of add a little bit more realism to the explosion itself and once we add the explosion back into the composite here you can see that all of the different debris on top of the original explosion definitely helps sell the effect a little bit more and as you can see we've also added some effects to the rock and glass passes we've adjusted the brightness of our rock pass with the curve setting we just brought the brightness down a little bit and we've also added some radial blur to the rocks as they blast out as well and we've done the same thing for the glass pass also keyframing the amount of blur to be higher during the initial part of the blast and then come down near the end of our explosion
and just for the sake of this tutorial as you can see here this is our explosion without any debris fields then we're going to go ahead and add the rock pass and then on top of that we'll add the glass pass just to bring everything together and uh, yeah after that essentially we added a bunch of uh, live action stock footage here so we added some dust wave effects under the explosion here to kind of uh, blend the explosion into the scene a little bit better we've also added a little uh, dust falling effect here by the tank as you can see under the corner of the tank here just add a little dust falling effect pretty subtle but just kind of a nice little element to add there and uh, yeah I just added a whole bunch more dust effects I had a little dust at cam effect to uh, hit the camera right after the explosion and then I added another dust wave behind the tank here to kind of create a sense of recoil even though the tank should actually probably move I didn't actually animate the tank moving when it shot so I did want to just add a little bit of dust behind the tank to create a sense of recoil and then again just some more dust waves to composite everything together finally we also added of course our muzzle flash for the tank itself so I'll go ahead and show you guys what I did there as you can see here when we turn it on pretty much a basic just stock footage muzzle flash and we've added some glow and radio blur to just kind of blend it into the shot a little bit and uh, yeah there's a little bit of smoke at the end of this muzzle flash which also helps kind of blend everything together and finally in addition to our color grade we've also added this bulge effect keyframe to kind of warp the uh, footage right when the explosion goes off it kind of adds a shock wave right when the explosion occurs and right before the dust hits our camera and I'll go ahead and show that without any of our explosion pass here the kind of shock wave that it adds and that's just a basic bulge effect just keyframe the bulge height to increase right when our explosion starts and then decrease back down to zero right when the dust hits our camera finally we just added a basic letterbox on top of our footage for that widescreen look and got this final composite Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next. I will be talking about more of the concepts inside of Blender that we use to create this scene, so stay tuned for those videos as well, and I'll see you next time.